by reason of displeasure. The moment there is displeasure, the moment there is hurt, the moment there is anger, the moment there is outrage, that state leaves you in a state the Bible calls offense. Are we together? Let me tell you a few very interesting things I've discovered about offense. Both being, uh, let me have two gentlemen. Oga Jordan, come. Promise, come. Just stand, both of you. One here, one here. Thank you, guys. Anybody. Just stand, one of you here. Watch this. If promise, listen, if promise offends Jordan, are we together? And Jordan gets very offended. Both promise the offender and Jordan the offended are both affected because the same thing is happening to them. I will tell you, both, write this down, being offensive and being offended has the same root and that root is self. Both being offensive and being offended comes from the same root. They are twins. Self. Our self-worth. Our self-esteem. And sometimes our self-centeredness. Write it down. Both, I mean being offensive and being offended has the same root. Self. What about the self? Our self-worth, we are offended because we think our self-worth has been abused. We are offended because we think our self-esteem has been insulted. And then, most times, we are offended because we are self-centered. Ah, you will be blessed tonight. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul are we together so jordan is here watch this as a person he has his what we call ego are we together jordan has his ego jordan has his sense of self-worth he believes he's not a small man he's not a small child and he's he's trying to protect his fragile ego his fragile uh, uh what do we call it now his fragile um, self-esteem and here comes promise and promise seems to disregard his self-esteem let me tell you something most times people offend us because of the frustration they feel as a result of their own low self-esteem so they respond to it by creating pain for another so that you see he said misery likes company are we together when people feel miserable they get why are you smiling what is it about the smiling am i looking like a clown you see the person usually is fighting something there is an internal conflict it just so happens that mistakenly you were the scapegoat that gave that internal conflict expression so it looks like you were the troublemaker but it's not are we together a father has been insulted from his office they told him mr man you have been underproductive and we cannot even believe that you're a master's holder did you buy this thing or did you really go to school and he comes back with that anger are we together and the tire of his car goes down and his little son is the scapegoat at that moment who will give that anger expression and he says you mean you didn't see this you, you didn't see this and he starts slapping the boy and you know that that offense listen it was never about tire it was about a man whose ego had been insulted and he was looking for a prey to vent it out and it so happened that that young boy was the scapegoat the helpless scapegoat who gave that offense expression are we together? Yeah. Have you seen people who get angry and are talking and ranting and shouting at you and at a point you say, calm down. What exactly is the problem? I don't even know honestly. I don't know again. Because the, 
It was not constructive. It was a rambling, like going around circles. A venting of anger. And then they cry. Usually when they cry, they now calm down. And say, what exactly is the problem? Say, see, my family, things are not going right. But you just told me I ate your food. So it was never about the food. It was a bad news that collided with food issue to find expression. Listen, both being offensive and being offended all come from the same root, self. Learn this. I learned this and it delivered me. Are we together? Self. If I think I'm a man of God, great man of God, Joshua Selman, and all of a sudden jo Jordan comes and seems to trivialize, trivialize my ego, I now turn and say, Jordan, do you know that, do you know that I'm not a small person at all? You see that? Jordan may trivialize me because he feels by doing that, he will reduce me and then feel high and me i'm trying to fight him to say no no matter what you do i'm the boss here are we together yeah listen learn this key and you will watch yourself rise you will you will look like a spirit walking upon the earth let me tell you something we are largely self-centered people you can call it selfish this is an uncomfortable truth, but if you listen to it and your heart is open, God will help you and deliver you tonight. Are we together? We are largely self-centered. So every time things are not done, the foundation of offense is disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you are angry, you are resentful. I expected this guy to come and tell me thank you. Jordan, that was nothing. I borrowed you 200,000. Now you have become a millionaire and you are looking at me as if we are mates, Abby. Disappointed expectations. Are we together? This guy has been roaming around me. He's not saying anything. He's blocking others from seeing well and he himself is not saying anything. I'm going to confront him today and say, bros, what is it? If you are not doing anything, get disappointed expectations. I helped this person. We did this business together. In my mind, I was thinking it's chop by chop and now he has left me. Offense. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. The moment your expectations are disappointed, you stand a chance to be offended. It is not unusual for offense to come. In fact, in Luke, I think at Luke 17, I hope I'm right. Give us Luke 17 verse 1. I think Jesus said something there. That offense will always come. Luke 17. You can sit down guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aha. I'm right. Go ahead and read it. One to read. He said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come. Stop there. Jesus himself is saying, Look, for as long as you are walking upon this earth, the opportunities for offense will come every day, every time, any time, at all times. Are we together? Because your expectations will be disappointed here and again. You will pay the school fees of a child and he will return back with a result that they will ask him to repeat. And then in the PTA letter, they will say they need to see you personally. Are we together? Then they will tell you the school fees has been increased from 50,000 to 75,000. And the boy has returned back out of 50 people in the class. He was 46 or 47. Then if you ever see him playing football, what happens? Pain. Offense. Are we together? Mm. You got somebody to work for you, maybe a house help. Or somebody to work for you or in a business your secretary and you say type this letter i need it in the next one hour and after one hour you come and see the lady calling a guy and and then she says, oh, sorry 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 my madam is coming you feel like slapping the person and you say, how much is this guy going to give you we're about to lose something because of your carelessness offense jesus said it is impossible that no offense should come 
one key to overcoming offense is to know that they will always come. Don't expect them, but prepare for them. Please look up. I have seen pastors who cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball. They love God, they fast, they pray, but they cannot look at themselves. I have even seen, do you know there are husbands and wives that cannot look at themselves eyeball to eyeball? They don't even stay in the same city. How are you? Happy birthday. I hear today is your birthday. I see if you didn't marry her. He said, yes. How are you? How are the children? I hope they are fine. Ah, is that Junior in the phone? Let me talk to him. Junior, how are you? All right, bye, 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 bye. And they drop the phone. Offense. You ask them what happened. They say in 1997, I saw one man with my wife and that day I said, me. You see, offense. Let me tell you something. The moment the devil wants to destroy you, Listen, please. He sends offense like a guy toasting a lady. If you dare say yes to that offense, you are in trouble. The strength of Satan is offense. Are we together? Every time the devil plots witchcraft, he uses offense like the battery that activates the bomb. You know how you put bomb and the remote control? You stand somewhere and blow the place. That remote control is offense. You finish praying and the answers are about to come. That is exactly when you finish praying, somebody baths with your water. You say, ah, who am I going to kill today? <laughs> who am I going to kill today? My hands are shaking. Somebody hold me. Call police. Offense. Have you not noticed that it's exactly when a miracle is coming that offense comes? Your husband, who has been a nice man, all of a sudden now tells you, Look, I, I just want you to know that we are sowing this house to a church. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. It was me too. It was the Holy Spirit. It was so hot in my spirit. We are packing out by tonight. And you are saying, what, what in the world is going on here? Offense. Don't laugh. When you just think status is changing, they just say, Your result has been placed. And you ask your friend, what did I get? Say, honestly, me too, I just checked my own. You know that there's trouble. They don't want to be the ones to tell you what is there. <laughs> Say, me too, I checked it in a hurry. Even me, I'm not clear about my own. Just, just go and check. Offense. Are we together? Mm. Offense. There are so many ways the devil destroys us. I was preparing to go and take my bath and the Lord showed me a vision that is very interesting. And I said I will share it with us. You know how women put towel when they are going to bath? Just at the chest level here. I saw chains on people, like hands were lifted. They couldn't come down because of the chains. And that's how people were moving. They couldn't do anything much. And then I said, ah, Lord, what is this? I thought maybe God wanted me to minister to people. And the Lord said, I'm still adding to your message. That's how offense is in the spirit. They cannot move. They cannot do anything. Their hands are tied. Their hands are bound. A woman could not kill John the Baptist, but offense killed him. I hope you know it was offense that killed him. He was angry, locked up in the prison. The man who commissioned Jesus to ministry now sends a few disciples because there were, there were a few loyalists that refused to follow Jesus. And I'm sure they'll come to John and say, John, I'm with you. You are in this prison and I'm with you. Do you know how Jesus is enjoying at your expense? You are here suffering and he's there riding on donkeys and so on and so forth. And at a point, John could not take it again. And John said, please go and ask this guy, are you the Messiah? You see, offense makes you stupid. You will do and say and be things. That you will be irritated later on. Are we together? He said, are you the Messiah? Or should we expect another? Look at how Jesus overcame that offense. Jesus would have said, really? Tell John I'm coming. <laughs> Let me show him that the fact that he baptized me doesn't mean I'm an idiot. Don't ever talk to me like that. I'm the son of the living God. No. Jesus politely and gently prayed. And notice what Jesus said. Blessed is he who is not offended. Because he knew what John's problem was. After he healed the sick, he said, uh-uh, don't be angry with John. 
The devil wants to join me and John together. Let me tell you how Satan takes away destiny helpers from your life. Offense. People who you have been friends with for 10 years, the 11th year when the miracle should come, Satan will scheme something. Are we together? Yeah. A man of God who has blessed your life so much. The last service, something will happen. You expected him to call you and prophesy to you and he ignored you. And he just said, this is it. This man, I don't even know whether he's born again or, or what. That thing, they're saying that he's using charm. I'm beginning to reconsider it because ah, I'm here, I'm looking at you all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it was my, my sister also last year or so. One time she said that I didn't used to prophesy to her. And um, they made up their mind that they were going to pray. And I think she was jokingly telling me that time, her and one of their friends, that if I call any name that sounds like her own, whether it's not her own, she will just come out. Because she has discovered that that's what some people do during miracle service. They just come out and they say, Why are you here? And since they are here, they don't go back. Say, I will come out to and stand offense offense is the root of bitterness offense is the root of resentment write it down these are the fruits when a man lives in offense you live in bitterness you live in resentment you live in unforgiveness you live in hatred Are we together? Listen, I used to think this is a very, you know, the interesting thing about spiritual growth, ba, the higher you rise, the things you consider trivial, you will find out that they are the pillars upon which your relevance is hinged on. There is a level in your life, Satan will no longer try to use women or money or all these things to destroy you. By grace, you would have overcome that level. And you would think you are free. John the Baptist, imagine if a lady just cat walked to John. John says, are you joking? I ate locusts and wild honey for how many years? I'm about to die. It's you that will come and do the... No, 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 no. And so he used offense and he destroyed him. Do you know a time came when Satan was finding out how am I going to destroy the church? Then he looked for the two chief apostles, Peter and Paul. Are we together? And he was going to join their head together offense to the end that the gospel be sabotaged are we together one time paul wrote a letter about a gentleman called onesimus have you read it pleading on his behalf because his master was offended different things had happened please hear me offense is a trap by Satan to rob you of your joy, to rob you of your peace, to rob you of your advancement, to rob you of the power and the glory of God. A preacher can never preach to people he's offended with. Imagine that I come up here and I say, you people are not sowing into my life. You don't even care whether I'm eating or not. And immediately I'm talking, somebody's phone rings. I say, who are you? Stand up. The church suddenly becomes a military cantonment. Because I'm offended that you are not sowing into my life. And now I'm venting that anger. There are many offended pastors. There are many offended assistant pastors are more offended than pastors. There is even a Nigerian film about that. One Mount Zion film. I watched it and it blessed me in no small way. Because the assistant pastors believe the pastors are chopping alone. They are laboring and the money. And they may be right. But there's still no room for offense. In any way, offense does not bless the victim. You have to learn this. And this is more so for ladies. Let me tell you how you will know. Listen. Let me tell you how you will know that you are free from offense or you are buried in offense the ease and the speed to which you get insulted and you react to the things that happen to you right 
is how much you are vulnerable to offense. There are people who get angry every time. As you are right now in Koinonia, there are people already frowning their faces. Because the person sitting near you is looking at every jotting you are writing. And you can almost say, bros, are you deaf? I'm laboring to construct my points and you, you just allow me to labor and you are listening and you write it. Offense. Are we together? Immediately after the grace, another episode entering the bus. Offense. This coin on yourself is he only can't they add some more buses? Had they not seen that we're increasing? Then another person will turn and say, Are you paying for it? Offense. <laughs> are we together? Then you turn to the protocol department, you are offended. They too, they are offended in you. Several people. Then someone goes to the media stand, harasses the people there, they harass him back. Look, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I show you a more excellent way. You can live a life of absolute peace. Absolute tranquility by choice. I made this decision and it has changed my life. Believe me when I tell you I cannot hate people. There's something God has done in me. I cannot hate I know you would say, ah, people have not offended you, Jerry. You are joking. How would you expect that I'm a leader at this level and have not been offended? I have done things for people. People have done things for me. People have trivialized my benevolence in their lives. You cannot imagine. This is my boy that works for me sometimes, especially when I'm preparing for miracle service. Then he would do something that I just feel, should I play ball with this boy? What should I do with him? And then I just look at him in his innocence and I know that the love of God is at work in me. Has your wife ever done something to you, those who are married, and you just, you, your hand almost lifted and you just took it back. I said, ah, <laughs> what's that song we sing? Devil, I see near you. <laughs> Offense. Offense is a cancer that destroys men. There are many prayer warriors who cannot enter the anointing because offense will not let them enter. Watch pastors sit together and everybody is watching who will disrespect him. Everybody who is watching who will do this. Oh, you came late, you sat outside, but apostles came late. They found a seat for him in front. What are you trying to say? Who is not anointed or who is more than who? Offense. It's like many of us are many of us are like wombs that are ready to receive that seed of offense. Are we together? You are ready to take in. The moment the seed comes, you incubate it and it grows and it destroys you. I like you to shout, no offense. No offense. Say it again, no offense. no offense. Parents are angry with children. Children are angry with parents. Right? You've heard me share a lot of things about my dad. But I love my father with all my heart. I cannot be offended with him. No. I love him with all my the, the generation of men, that whole generation, the devil really cheated them. He sold a mindset for them that they received. So it's not their fault. It's a wrong ideology. There are too many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that can offend us. From your roommate to your food to the restaurant, to your lecturer, to your boss, to your subordinate. Everything in life that has the propensity of disappointing your expectation can plant a seed of offense. But you must set a guard over your heart and make up your mind that I will not be offended. Let me show you one scripture and then I tie up a few things and then we pray. This is a simple but powerful message. Psalm 119, please. Psalm 119 verse 165. Psalm 119 verse 165. Psalm 119. I'd like us to read it together. Please look up. One, two, read. Great peace have they which love thy law. Uh -huh. And nothing shall offend them. Hallelujah. God is talking about me. Great peace. Shalom. Great peace. Undisturbed. Uh-uh. You don't get offended all around. 
Someone wore your clothes. Now, humanly speaking, that's very painful. Someone did something nasty. You kept your last meal. Someone came and ate it and you are angry. Listen, offense will come. I didn't say it may come. It will come. Even as I'm speaking right now, there are, you're going to have all kinds of reasons to be angry. Are we together? Disappointed expectations. But are you going to make up your mind that great peace I have. I love your law. I love your ways. And as a result, I will not be offended. Trust me. I have, I thought this was impossible until my life became an experience of it. You will never, I tell you this, you will never see me sit down with bitter hatred and I'm thinking of somebody. Let me tell you something. Do you know what Satan does to you when you are offended? He begins to plant in you ideas for revenge. The key, the proof that offense has eaten you is that there is a force that stimulates you for revenge. So Faustina did something to me and I sit down and I'm thinking, how do I hurt this girl? Now, please listen. Different departments. Protocol department, listen to because you guys work with people and you have about the greatest of propensity to being offended. And you can think, next week, how do I do this? How do I do that? No, it's bad. Listen, let people see you and see the life of Jesus at work in you. Sisters, am I speaking to you? Don't say I'm like that, oh. Ha, you touch me, you touch fire. No, no. The fire is towards darkness, not your fellow man. Say, I will disgrace this girl. I swear, I will do something for this girl. She, she will run away with her head in this area. No. For a Christian who believes the Holy Ghost is at work in you, the question I want to ask you for making that decision is what is the role of the Holy Spirit in that decision you are taking? What role is he playing? You embarrass me, I will show you. Ah! Just because I'm silent, it doesn't... No, no, brothers and sisters make up your mind that you will master the law of love and you will see people sit down and plot against you and while they are plotting because love never fails their plot will be a waste ah put a jam for me on the road on 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 on, on the road as i travel and love listen listen the bible says the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest he dips his hand in iniquity quarter to shame you see love bail you out are we together 